and welcome to the end times. For ages, man has had a fascination with the timetable concerning the return of Jesus Christ here to earth. Man has used numbers in the Bible, consulted with soothsayers, fortune tellers, and top-notch Bible professors just to find out the exact date and time that Jesus Christ is returning to earth. Well, let me save you a lot of unnecessary time and work and give you the real truth as to when Jesus is returning. It is very important that you remember this. Anyone telling you that you, they know the exact date and time that Jesus Christ is coming is lying and deceiving you, period. How do I know this? Well, let's go to the Bible, the written word of Jesus Christ himself, to see what he has to say about his return. Okay? In the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 36, says the following, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. This is Jesus Christ telling us that no one knows the exact date or hour of His return to earth, but God the Father Yahweh Himself, or only. That alone should tell you to be cautious of anyone setting times and dates for Christ's return. Now does this mean that Jesus Christ is not coming anytime soon? No, that's not what it means. It means that we don't know the exact day or time, but Jesus left many clues as to when His return is near. We do know that Jesus Christ could come at any time now. It could be today. It could be tomorrow or even next month. No one but God the Father knows for sure. What we don't know is the exact time or date. Now if you go to Matthew chapter 24 verse 3, the disciples of Jesus asked them the following question. And this is how it reads. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Then if you go to Matthew 24, 4, Jesus answers the question. And it reads as follows. Take heed that no one deceives you for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And one good example of this is Reverend Sung Yam Moon, who states that Jesus Christ died prematurely, and he, Reverend Moon, came to finish the work that Jesus started, which is a total lie. Jesus then continues in the verse and says, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. We have had room, uh, wars and rumors of wars for many years. There has been at least one war ongoing somewhere in the world at every time. Today there are many and growing in size and intensity. Uh, many people say we've had wars here and there, but the thing is that the wars are growing in intensity and everything in the book of Ezekiel, the book of Daniel, and the book of Reverend are coming to place. Jesus then continues in the chapter 3 by saying, For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. Now, we can clearly see that this is going on, especially in Africa and Haiti, and other parts of the world, where people are starving, where you have massive earthquakes, you have pestilence, you have diseases, and everything else. Then Jesus continues by saying, all these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to the tribulation and kill you, referring to his followers, the Christians. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Hey, we can clearly see this throughout the world, especially throughout the Islamic countries, as Muslims slaughter millions of Christians. These are the news that you will not hear, uh, especially here in America because of the liberal and biased media. In other words, it is not politically correct to report these events because they may offend Muslims. So as these killings take place, America, as well as the United Nations, are turning a blind eye. Christians are hated worldwide, and Jesus had foretold of, his, of this before his coming. Remember, no other religion is a threat to Satan but Christianity. So this is the religion that Satan is targeting for destruction. No other false god is a threat to Satan. 
The only threat to Satan is the true God, Jesus Christ, and his Christian followers. No wonder Christianity is becoming less popular and a threat to many who oppose it. Many politicians and world leaders say that they know things will start to get better, but the fact of the matter is that things will, are going to get much worse before Jesus comes to put a stop to this madness. It is not our priority to know the exact date or time that Jesus is coming for his followers. It is our priority, though, that we are ready to be taken up with him when the rapture occurs. Are you ready to be caught up in the rapture? If you're not, then you can be ready by simply talking to Jesus and asking him to forgive your sins. It's that simple. Once you do that and receive him in your heart and get rid of all any other false god which is occupying that space, then Jesus will come in and forgive you. Repent of your sins and turn away from them. Receive Jesus Christ as your only Savior and follow him and also obey his word. That's all you have to do to escape the eternity in hell. And there is a hell. There is a literal hell and all who will not make it to heaven are going straight to hell, unfortunately. This is something that many churches don't want to preach nowadays, but I would have to tell you the truth. There exists a literal heaven and a literal hell. This soul never dies. Once you, you uh, leave this earth, you either go to heaven or you go to hell. The choice is up to you. After you finish watching this video, pray to Jesus and ask Him to forgive you. Ask Him to come into your life and help you. Once you do that, then He will do the rest. It's that simple. May God bless you, and until next time, Lord willing.